What is up, everybody? This is All Things Entertaining here, bringing you with a brand new video. And today, we've got a blast from the past. Today, we're going to be looking back into the past of way back in, in, in Yu Gi Oh!'s heyday and see what was the top deck for that time. Today, we're going to be looking at Adam Korn's top four Zombie Diva deck list, all the way back from 2009. And where he took an S SJS or SJC, which is a Shonen Jump Championship, and I'm going to be explaining some specific things about this deck that kind of reflect uh, our transition into what we do now. Just for the record, when you play older formats, just understand that combo decks like we have these days were not as prolific as they are today. Um, Sure, combo decks certainly existed, and they certainly were around, uh, but they were not as turn one reliant as they are now. Realistically, more people relied solely on the control aspect of the game rather than the uh, combo aspect of the game. And I think that's just a general shift with any card game is that you usually have these sort of metas that develop on their own under three specific kind of types of, of uh, gameplay. And we are currently in control, or we're currently in a combo heavy meta game, whereas back in 2009 we were more in a control focused oriented game. Uh, combo decks were, like I said, combo decks did exist, but they were not as uh, uh, prominent as they are now. So we're going to go over the deck list and we're going to be going over some key aspects of this deck that make it a little bit more interesting than what you might suspect. So the first thing that we've got here is Trigodia. Uh, this card was actually a pretty monstrous hand trap way back in the day. For those of you who have never seen this card before, because it's very possible that a lot of you players have never seen this card because you guys have not been playing past the three or four years. Uh, so, when you take battle damage, you can special summon this card from your hand. It gains 600 attack and defense for each card in your hand. Once per turn, you can send one monster from your hand or to the graveyard to target one face of monster on your uh, your opponent controls with the same level as the sent monster uh, in, uh, had uh, had in the hand. Take control of that face up monster. Once per turn, you can target one monster in your graveyard. This card's level becomes the same as that targets until the end of this turn. So basically what this book card would do is you would have a lot of cards that you would want to discard or cards that you really didn't care about discarding. And then you would activate this card's effect to basically steal some of your opponent's monsters or reduce this card's level um, so to, to perform easy synchro plays. Uh, this card was at one copy per deck for quite a while. I think up until about I think 2012, um, and the card was super prolific. Not only was this card be a free to summon whenever you took battle damage, it was not as restrictive as the other hand trap that is placed played in, in this deck. Um, like I said, also I want to do point out that hand traps also were not as prolific as they were. Um, the, uh, the, as they are these days. Sure, we had cards like Gores and Trigodia, as we're going to talk about soon, and we also had cards like Battle Fader, which was pretty prominent back then, and we also had Max C, uh, but Max C was actually kind of a fair card uh, when it was released. Uh, we'll talk about that later, maybe in a, in a separate video, but um, Trigodia was one of the best hand traps to be playing around, and to be playing around. It was actually limited, and it reflected this power level quite well. One, Dark Arm Dragon. This card was originally uh these people the people who have not people who know about this card know it from teledad uh it was actually limited to one during this point in time and it was still a particularly strong card in fact it's it's it was so strong that konami really didn't really consider putting this card to anywhere close to two for quite some time um as far as i'm aware i think dark arm dragon is currently not limited um let me change my thing here just so i can finally actually know for sure yeah dark arm dragon is currently a th currently at three copies per deck but he, but this card used to be particularly scary because being able to summon the card for pretty much free because you would always just be able to manip manipulate your graveyard just enough to uh warrant three darks in your graveyard also the effect of just freely popping cards was basically the term of was basically the same as negating cards at that time it was pretty crazy um the next card here that we're going to be talking about is Gores. Now this is the other powerful hand trap that was played during this uh, this time frame. However, this card was a little bit more restrictive than our good buddy Trigodia. 
Uh, for those of you who, again, have never read this card before, uh, when you take battle damage from a card in your opponent's possession, you can special summon this card from your hand. You must control no cards to activate and resolve this effect. If summoned this way, special uh, activate the appropriate effect based on the type of damage. Battle damage, special summon one Emissary of Darkness token, Fairy, Light, uh, level 7, question mark, attack, question mark, defense. Its attack and defense are equal to the amount of battle damage you took. If effect damage, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the amount of damage that you took. So the most common the most common version of this effect that you would activate would be the one from battle damage where you would special summon a token and it would become a really big token. This is, this is uh, why you might see some veteran players always attack with the weakest monster first, just because they kind of have PTSD surrounding gores. Um, it was very, uh, it was very, uh, it was very oppressive to, to fight against, uh, fight against your opponent, only for them to drop this card and then to gain a lot more advantage than you could on your turn. Therefore, it was sent. It was limited to the one for quite some time. It's I think also followed the same trend as Tragodia being limited to two, and then going back to three at around twenty twelve or so. I don't. I might not. I might. Not, I might not be remembering that correctly, but I think it's around that time. At least 2011, 2012 is when this card started falling out of favor, and people still played it from at least until twenty thirteen. It was still very good. Um, so yes, next card is instead of uh, instead of destroying cards. One of the best ways of getting rid of cards, even to this day, is by removing it completely from the field without destroying it. Uh, that's why you see cards that, uh, that's why you see cards like the target and destroy cards not being played all that much. Uh, but Caius was ahead of its time. It banished a monster on the field. It didn't matter what, it actually banished a card, so it could also effectively be spell and trap removal. It didn't really matter what card it was. And if it was a dark monster, well, you just inflict your opponent with a, with a thousand points of damage. It's pretty good that back back in the day. Uh, this deck is playing two copies, and it was particularly good. Um, you would tribute your own monster, then you would get the uh, get some uh, get to, it would even itself out for the minus, and you would get a twenty four hundred body on the board, which was actually not that easy to deal with. Zombie Master. This is a zombie type deck, so you're going to want to play at least one copy of this card. I believe this card was limited at one point. Um, I'm not entirely certain about that, but I do believe this card was pretty powerful in its heyday, um, and it reflected that in this one. I think Mizuki here, it's, uh, two, car two copies of this. I, I think this card just went to two copies per deck um, in the TCG. I think it was quickly reverted back to one, and then it came, went back to two, and then went to three. Um, but back then, being able to just special summon a monster, for a zombie from your graveyard, it was pretty good. Zombies back then were actually one of the craziest uh, types in the game. I think they kind of still are in a way, but they are no longer near as powerful as they used to be. Um, this card was super good. It was searchable by Pyramid Turtle, which you're playing a copy of. And it was just super good for discard fodder in, from, from for cards like Dragodia and other such cards. It was very good. Um, for what it was. Two Mystic Tomato, that's right, this card that was released all the way back in 2003, I believe, and Magic Ruler, was a competitively viable card for a long time. Uh, this uh, Being able to summon any dark monster that was 1500 attack or less from your deck was super good. Um, and as the game progressed, that pool of dark monsters grew even stronger. You had cards like Goblin Zombie, which we'll talk about in a second, Gale the Whirlwind, Sangan, stuff like Spear Reaper, and Plague, Plague Spreader Zombie. All these cards were you kind of wanted to summon, and they were pretty good by themselves. Granted, some of them were worse than others, but for the most part, Mystic Tomato did play a key role in recruiting cards from your deck. That's when the term recruiter was actually kind of coined, was around this time. Pyramid Turtle, another particularly good card, was a... was a, uh, much like Mystic Tomato, just but a little bit better, but a little bit more niche in this deck, since uh, the good zombies were act one copy or semi-limited. Um, being able to summon pretty much all your zombie monsters from your deck, that because they all had 2,000 or less defense, um, it was really good. These days, Mystic Tomato and Pyramid Turtle, kind of a slow card, but, you know, they are fond memories to look back onto. People were actually clamoring for Mystic Tomato to be put to one at some point, but... That never really happened. 
uh, two Goblin Zombie. I also think this card was also uh, just went to two. If not, it went to two uh, the previous list before Mizuki went to two. Um, but this card was actually kind of terrifying. One, if it dealt battle damage, your opponent would mill a card. And back in the day, milling cards was kind of a big deal. Secondly, it also added a zombie monster that was 1200 in defense or less to your hand. That was, again, basically every single monster in your deck. This card was basically better Pyramid Turtle in some ways because you would um, not oh, because you would just be able to add the card instead and some people wanted, wanted that over that. Uh, Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind. Uh, it, it might seem strikingly, uh, strikingly amusing that at one point people really feared Gale the Whirlwind. Having the ability to just cut one of your opponent's monsters attack in half and then being able to run over it was super impactful. Uh, being able to summon this card and then being able to activate its effect to half your opponent's Stardust Dragon to 1250 was kind of crazy. So it was limited to one at some point. Also the fact that Black Wings at this time were actually a, comp uh, a competitively viable deck it made sense to limit one of the most powerful tools that they had, which was Black World, which was Gale the Whirlwind. Uh, nowadays, this card is kind of mediocre, but it's still played in Black Wings to this day. One say again, as you can see, this in, in my EDO Pro, this has a red X or, or an X on it, because I'm using the pre-eroded version, which basically just removes the hard once per turn clause on it that I had, and also that you can't activate the effect of that card during the turn that you had the monster. Uh, instead, you had this card. This card was super powerful for quite a long time, but it wasn't really banned until 2012, I think. Uh, 2012 or 2011. Uh, I think what I think is whenever Extreme Victory came out, which I think might actually have been 2010 now that I'm thinking about it. But the reason why this card is super good is because having the ability to add pretty much most of your cards is really strong. Wish of the Black Forest was banned pre primar primarily for the fact that its pool was even wider than Saiyan Games, but this card was fair enough to be put at 1, so it was 1, and that's where it was stayed for a while. Spirit Reaper is another card that was limited at some point, alongside Marshmallow, which was another card that couldn't be destroyed by battle, uh, but this card was also a little bit interesting that when it dealt direct battle damage to your opponent, it discarded a random card, so having the ability to have a, a bit of hand control on top of cards like or on top of having a card that can't be really destroyed by battle, um, was super good. Especially since you were playing a lot of synchro monsters, you kind of wanted the monster to be super sticky. So, and, and Spirit Reaper is the definition of super sticky. Plague Spreader Zombie was feared, and one of the, was, is, is, and it was one of the best tuna monsters to ever exist uh, during this period of time. It was at one copy per deck, and even at one copy per deck, people were still speculating that this card should actually have been banned. Uh, first off, you would just summon this card, and then you would make your Rando, you make you would make your level six synchro. Then, if you really wanted to make the level eight synchro, you would put a card back on the top of your deck, preferably a card that you wanted to draw anyway, um, but you couldn't use at the at that exact time. And then you would special summon it, and then you would go into your level eight monster. People would try to mitigate the effect of banishing it when it left the field by like book of mooning it. And they also play cards like. Uh, barrel, uh, barrel from a different dimension, or book of life to revive it, or put it back in the graveyard. But Plex Bears Army was one of the best Tuna monsters to ever exist. So you played it. I think even decks that weren't really focused on zombies played Plex Spreader Zombie because it was super good. Next is Deep Sea Diva. Everybody knows this card. This card actually just recently came back to three copies per deck because of the fact that it actually received some some new support. Um, yeah, this card is still really good. Uh, but it's not as good as it used to be. And for that reason, it's, it went to 3. But when this card was first released, the pool for level 3 or lower sea server monsters was actually particularly strong. It was limited for quite some time. And for good reason. It's just being able to summon a free body was really good. I think if we came up with this combo where you just summon another monster, you be a pretty easy link to combo um, nowadays but alas we didn't have deep sea diva when we were first getting um link monsters but you know it is what it is but this card was super good for also it was water water was really good too it was a really good attribute to have 
Next was two Alara Darkness. I think this card was just recently went away back from two, uh, one to two. Uh, some people still speculate this card is probably a little bit too good for it to be a three, but you know, it is what it is. It's here, so we might as well enjoy what it, what it was. This card was actually emergency banned at one, or not emergency banned, probably emergency limited at one point. Uh, because being able to draw two cards for basically free, basically pot agreed, was really good. You had a lot of dark monsters, so the chance of this card missing is p particularly low. Book of Life, Monster Reborn was banned, so you played Book of Life in compensation for that. It targeted a zombie, sure it was very specific, but you also got to remove a card from your opponent's graveyard um, by banishing it. So it was pretty good. Heavy Storm, Heavy Storm is always going to be good. Mind Control, everyone played Mind Control in their side decks when this card was at 3, so naturally people play, people abused this card when it was at uh, when it was out in the TCG at first. Uh, brain Control, back when it was not eroded, was a super insane card. Being able to take your opponent's monsters just to sync, just to attack with them and then sync or summon with them or tribute them afterwards was super was super strong, which it actually ended up on the ban list for quite some time until it was eroded, and now it's at three copies per deck, which you know is super strong. It, you know it's obviously super good. MSD, MSD was actually at one copy per deck i believe at this point and it was you know for obvious reasons a lot of spell and trap removal people were kind of over over exerting it now we don't play enough spell and trap removal and people complain about mystic mind but that's a whole different story um just being able to pop cards was really good back back in the day two book of moon uh one barrel from the different dimension some people actually never heard of this card either just basically returns three managed monsters to your, up to uh three managed monsters in the graveyard uh, pretty good for recycling your flex spread zombies and your bazookies. My buddy is a shield. I believe. I believe this card was to counter um, Heavy Storm. Because I don't think we had Dark Hole around this time. I think Dark Hole came back in 2010. But it was super good for countering Heavy Storm. You didn't, I don't think we also. I don't think we had um, Stardust or Star or Starlight Road either yet. Uh, I didn't think that was until 2010, I think. Enemy controller. Again, being able to take your opponent's monsters was pretty good. Also, it was a pretty defensive card that you could play against your opponent's uh, attacks. So it was pretty good. Bottomless Trap Hole was at three copies, I believe. Well, actually, no. I think, this, I think it was at two, and then it went to one. But yeah, then they put it to one, and then they put, and then, uh, uh, they put it back to... Um, three after a while after this card got completely power crapped. Uh, but this card was super strong. It was at two for a long time actually. And it was better than Trap Hole. It was uh, better than a lot of cards out there and it was pretty good removal. Mirror Force. People were desperately afraid of this card. This is why you would see some some again veteran players have PTSD about this card. They would set card they would set they would if they see see a set card, they will switch their strongest monster to defense mode and then attack with their weakest monster so to bait out your mirror force um stuff like that did happen back in the day uh torrential tribute was that one back in the day uh it was super good removal this tornado i believe was that one at 1.2 if not it was definitely semi-limited um phoenix wing blast was pretty good tribe dust shoot being able to snip cards out of your opponent's hand is uh pretty strong um this card was actually kind of a threat back in the day because taking a, taking a crucial control piece from your opponent was really good, especially on turn one. Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment has always been, been a good card, just so you know, guys. It's never... It's, I don't think this card will ever really thoroughly be power crept because the ability to just to negate anything is pretty good. Sure, it might not see play sometimes, but I don't really think that's necessarily the definition of being power crept, but it is. but it was super good. On to... The extra deck. Synchros were very prominent. And we had Red Dragon Archfiend. Colossal Fighter. Thought Ruler Archfiend. Two Stardust Dragon because being able to negate cards was pretty good. Black uh, Blackwing Armor Master. Remember, you were one of the, running one Gale, so you might as well play the best card in Black Wings, which was this card. Uh, Black Rose Dragon. I believe this card was limited at, uh, at this point. Goyo Guardian. Now, this might seem like it's a little weird. Uh, hey, doesn't uh, Goyo Guardian require an Earth non-tuner? Well, yes. Yes, it does. It does now. But 
When it was first released, this card was completely generic, and this card was utterly terrifying. Your opponent would summon this card, and they would attack into your monster, and then they would just steal your card. It would go to the graveyard, of course, but it, the, the being able to r r rob your opponent of potential resources that they could potentially use later on was really was really good. This card was so feared, in fact, that the, that the OCG eroded the card, even though we had the card in three and wasn't doing anything. But that being said, the card was super busted. The card had a lot of attack for a level sync synchro, and it was really just the upper echelon of really good synchro monster. This was the pinnacle, the top of the cream of the crop. I believe this card was that one when Goyo Garden was uh, was in its heyday, and I think if this card was, or I think I think if it was at three, you probably would see decklist with three copies in it. Revive King Hadaz. It just negates the effects of monsters that are destroyed by the die battle with zombie type monsters that you control. It was pretty good. Uh, this card was really good if your opponent if your opponent was trying to set a Sangen on you and uh, uh, you just had a level four monster, but they forgot about your Plex Burger Zombie. So it was good for negating that card. Doom Kaiser Dragon. Um, it takes a zombie from your opponent's graveyard and then special summons it, and but then and then it destroys it. So this card was really good. Especially if your opponent didn't use Black, uh, Plague Spreader Zombie, uh, it's also good for for uh, decks that were casually just playing with the Zombie World because you would just take any monster in their graveyard and then you would just synchro summon with it. It was pretty good. Now this card, this card was a menace. Some of you over the past couple uh, over the past few years might remember this card from Jesse Cotton's list in Sydney, Australia, where you got second place with Thunder Dragons and he was playing Bryonic to remove um, other Thunder Dragons from the field as well as back row. Uh, but this card is notorious for those of you who have played through the Synchro era and a little bit in the Xyz era for being able to bounce your own cards. This card used to not be able to bounce your own. This card used to be able to just bounce everything on the field. You would discard your entire hand, which you didn't really mind because the the powerful cards in your hand you would keep those and then you would just discard whatever cards you wanted because you wanted to bounce everything this card is also super good for recurring some of your own cards such as maybe you wanted your miss maybe you wanted to reuse your caius's again maybe you wanted to reuse your dragodia and your gores again to give your opponent a little bit of a fear maybe you wanted to resummon dark arm dragon for whatever reason it was just a really good a removal tool and it had a lot of utility for bouncing your own cards as well um this card was super good this card was incredibly amazing and it was actually at one for some time and then eventually banned uh, because of how powerful it was and lastly <coughs> ally of justice catastrophe now some of you might recognize this effect actually as a similar effect in <coughs> um el shadal construct instead of dark non-dark monsters it would destroy anything that was special summoned. Uh, this card would do the exact, would do basically the same thing for dark monsters. It was just super easy removal to have. So it was. So this is what the old school Yu-Gi-Ohs was played. Everybody knows what goat control is, but I feel like not a lot of people talk about the in between. People talk about the talk about Teledad. But a lot of people talk about goat control. People talk about dragon rulers and. Heck, even people are now starting to talk about Zodiac for way from 2016. That's starting to become a nostalgic deck um, for a lot of people. So I figured it would be nice to shine some light on a deck that goes a bit under the radar. It did successful. It did pretty well. It was pretty successful in what it does. And the game the back in, it also highlights a time back when the game was relatively sim simplistic by comparison to modern Yu-Gi-Oh. So if you did have a have a if you did enjoy this video, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I will see you all in the next video. This has been All Things Entertaining, signing out.